From an early age, Bill Gates focused on using computer technology to solve the issues his surroundings was facing. Now, despite his overall positive image, there's a slew of conspiracy theories that try and smear his goody-goody image. From COVID-19 vaccines and their supposed ability to microchip humanity to the sterilization of women in Kenya, there ain't no telling what the next scandal will be. So the dude grew up in Seattle, Washington with the support of family that encouraged him every step of the way. Now, he showed an interest in the then brand new computer technology and he wasted no time using it to its full potential. So at age 13, he wrote his first software program. And by the time he was in high school, he already founded his first company, Traf O Data. Now, this company sold traffic and counting systems to local governments. Now, similarly to other billionaires like Mark Zuckerberg, the dude dropped out of college in his junior year to concentrate on developing his new company, Microsoft. Now, he did this in partnership with his childhood friend, Paul G. Allen, who would remain a large part of the company until eight years later when he resigned because of his deteriorating health. Now, Gates had a lot of influence on the microcomputer industry when it was just starting out, and this influence increased tenfold when Microsoft licensed an operating system called MS-DOS to International Business Machines Corporation, aka IBM, which was at the time the largest computer supplier in the world. Now, this operating system was used on the company's first microcomputer, the IBM PC. Over the years, things would become strained with the company, and Gates would eventually gain the freedom and wealth that he desired. By playing his cards right and a bit of industry manipulation, Gates had become the PC industry's kingpin. Now, of course, we as humans got a jealous nature, especially when it comes to multi-billionaires. Now, many, fueled with his jealousy, start creating conspiracy theories to destroy somebody's image, or at the very least, damage it for nothing other than their own satisfaction. Now, such is the story of Bill Gates. Now, uncountable conspiracy theories have bloomed to life over the years in an attempt to disrupt the image that Gates has created for himself through his many humanitarian efforts. They seem to reach a brand new high during the COVID-19 pandemic. Claims that Bill Gates was using this pandemic to implant microchips into the entirety of humanity popped up. So this theory was really popular with anti-vaxxers and all those people who crave a little drama in their lives. Now Gates' team came out with a very dignified answer to a very undignified accusation. While Gates did mention health certificates in a discussion, he's never alluded to a more sinister plot. I mean, plus, y'all, we got things that already track us anyway. They're called smartphones. And if you like me, most of y'all can't even put those down for five seconds. Now, of course, this ain't the end of the slew of COVID-19 theories that came about during the height of the pandemic. Yeah, they varied up, too. Now, some suggested that Gates funded the Perbright Institute and that the Institute owns the patent for the COVID-19 virus. Now, it's not really clear to us what use Gates would have for the patents unless they used them to quickly create a vaccine to microchip humanity, but we already know that one is not true, so it's anybody's guess, really. Now, as all these theories tend to go up in flames, so does this one. Now, the claim that the Institute held the patent was debunked and the theory was forgotten. Now, just because that theory blended into the background doesn't mean all of them did. In fact, with the disapproving of one theory, a place opens up for a brand new one to take center stage. Now, it's generally unbelievable that this many theories have been made up by anti-vaxxers, theorists, and internet trolls. Honestly, the human ability of imagination truly is a wonder. But it's sort of sad to see it be used to point fingers at people who got nothing to do with the disasters that surround us all daily. I mean, really, the insanity just keeps on getting worse and worse. At least these claims are fun to hear about when they aren't about you, but we sure would be uncomfortable in Gates' place. In 2014, a post claimed that Gates funded an experimental HPV vaccine, which was then used on 23,000 girls in India, of which 7 died and 1,200 suffered side effects. Now, this information is a bit misleading, since it makes it sound as though they died because of the vaccines. Now, they didn't, though. They died in completely unrelated circumstances like a snake bite or other diseases. Besides this, the same post also proposed that Gates' funding of the World Health Organization by donating $10 billion allowed him to chemically sterilize millions of Kenyan women with a tetanus vaccine. Now, this ain't the first time that Gates has been accused of believing in sterilization and population control. As in 2021, a video popped up of a man saying the sentence, 
In the words of Bill Gates, at least 3 billion people need to die. Now, there ain't been no evidence found that he's ever said this, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has confirmed that this claim is false. But we suppose that claims of he said, she said are kind of hard to prove or disprove. Now y'all, your support means a lot to us, so don't forget to press that like and subscribe button to express your gratitude and enjoyment of our content. Now the Bill and Melinda Foundation is a topic that we haven't really touched upon in this video, and it's kinda not without its fair share of accusations too. So the foundation's done a great deal of good in the world and has been the primary focus of Gates and his wife for a number of years at this point. Billions of dollars have been funneled into helping people live healthy, productive lives. In developing countries, its focus is shifted to improving people's health and giving them a chance to escape hunger and extreme poverty. Since 2000, the foundation has donated a total of $59 billion. As with all things in life, this foundation ain't all good. Now, trouble began when a U.S. financial site published the foundation's investment portfolio, which revealed that it had bought Monsanto's shares worth around $23 million. Now, Monsanto might not be a company that you're familiar with, but here's a quick rundown. It's a serial violator of federal environmental laws, and it exposes people to chemicals that can cause serious health issues. Not only are their products toxic to humans, but to the environment as well. Now, just with these few facts, y'all can see why the acquisition of stocks by the Bill and Melinda Foundation presents an issue. Now, it goes against everything that they've been apparently working towards. It supports the destruction of the environment and small farms just trying to make a living. Even worse than that, the African Center for Biosafety then found out that the foundation was teaming up with Cargill in a $10 million project which, when translated from corporate speak, probably insinuates the introduction of GM soya in Southern Africa. Now these incidents raise a variety of questions. Now it ain't believable that Gates naively backed the agricultural giants, nor was he fooled into doing so with false promises. So what exactly was the motivation behind such a move? What was Gates hoping to gain by supporting those who actively go against all of his ideas? Or maybe they ain't his ideas, they're just an elaborate show. Or was he just trying to buy a large amount of stock so that he actually had a broader say in the company so he could change things from the inside? Now these questions and many more will probably never be answered. Now those who have as much wealth and influence as Bill Gates rarely get caught in compromising situations, let alone face the consequences of their actions. We can be thankful for the good that they've done, since they have done more than the majority of others who are in the same tax bracket as them. The foundation has helped those who thought no help was coming, and for that, we all ought to be grateful. There's no doubt there's going to be many more conspiracy theories involving Gates and his foundation in the near future. In fact, they probably ain't going to stop for a long time even after the time of Bill Gates has passed. Of course, there's a bit of truth in all lies, no matter how outrageous or out there a lie is. It's just a question of which one is completely true. So what are your thoughts on all of this? Make sure you let me know in the comments section down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.